What are the new apps for Office? Hi, this is Crystal. I'm going to show you what apps for Office are and how you can get started using them. A good place to go is dev.office.com and start exploring. I found this free JavaScript API tutorial for Office by Microsoft in the App Store. Unfortunately, the instructions for installing this app are not complete. I'll show you the steps that are missing. To get the app, click on the Add button. If you are not signed in, fill in your Microsoft login credentials and click Sign In. This takes you to a confirmation page to get the app. Click Continue. This downloads the app and now it is accessible. Now to find it and figure out how to use it. The first step is to open an application such as Excel. I hold down the Windows key on my keyboard and press Q. This takes me to the Windows search box and I start typing Excel. There's the icon to launch it. I click. Now in Excel, I choose the blank workbook template. I go to the insert ribbon and choose apps for office, then see all. I choose API tutorial for office app. I also see another app I got from the store, Bing Maps. As I get more apps from the store, there will be more choices in my catalog. After I choose the app I want, I click Insert. The app is now loading. And it is taking a long time. There must be something preventing it from loading. I'll bet it can't load. This is a new installation of Excel. I've not changed any of the defaults. Out of the box, Excel can't run programs. Those of you who write VBA, known to many of you as macros, are aware that there are settings you have to change. And sure enough, here's an app error that says, we can't start this app because it isn't set up properly. Clicking retry doesn't change anything. Clicking see details opens a browser page to the app listing in the store. The details section does not explain how to use the app once it is added. The FAQ doesn't explain what to do either, nor does the requirements. Luckily, we can guess it is something in the Excel option settings. From the ribbon, choose File Options. While I'm here, I'm going to change the Office theme to dark gray. This, of course, has no effect on permissions for the app. I'll just set it while I'm here. This makes the ribbons darker. Now I'll jump down to the Trust Center and click the Trust Center Settings Command button on the right. There is something I always do the first time I set defaults for a new installation, and that is to trust all the drives and subdirectories on those drives that are mounted in my machine. And that's because I'm a programmer, and I put code just about everywhere. <laughs> On the left, I choose Trusted Locations and then the Add New Location command button. My first drive is C, and I also check the box so that all subfolders on that drive are trusted. I add my other drives. When I have a stick plugged in, I'll add that drive too. I will also check the box to allow Trusted Locations on my network. Ideally, I'd stop here to see if this is causing the error with the app not running. However, I think I see what needs to be set. There is a new choice called Trusted App Catalogs. No doubt I'll be getting more apps from Microsoft in the future. I might as well just trust their whole catalog. So there is a place for a catalog URL. Where a Browse button would be, I see Add Catalog. If I click on the Add Catalog button, I see an error message because I didn't enter anything to add. Hey, a cool app would be to browse to a website and then grab the URL for pasting. Another day, another lesson, or maybe one of you will write it. What would be the catalog URL? 
If I click Microsoft Corporation from the Store page, here is what pops up. This is the Store Provider page for Microsoft. I click in the address bar of my browser and copy the URL. In the Excel settings, I paste the copied URL and click Add Catalog. I get an error again. The message tells me that HTTPS is required instead of HTTP. Microsoft, you need to adjust your own links. I edit the URL to add an S after HTTP and before the colon whack whack. By the way, the S just adds a security uh, option in. Okay, so now I click Add Catalog. There it is. I click OK and OK. There is my app with the retry button, so I click it. Do you think it'll work? Yes, it works. What is this? I see a title bar that says Introducing the new JavaScript API for Office. The first example shows the code to write information into a cell, into a selected cell. I click on A1 to select it and make that the cell where the information will go. Then I click the Run Code button. Hello World now appears in my selected cell. So what code needs to be written to make this happen? There isn't much here, but it sure does look pretty scary. OK, let's break it down. Office represents the JavaScript API. Context. According to help in the Office Dev Center, the context object provides access to key objects in the JavaScript API for Office. And that sounds pretty confusing if I wouldn't already know what it meant. So let's look within the context. One of the properties is document. To create a reference to the document that the app is being used in, which in this case is an Excel spreadsheet, use office.context.document, which returns a document object. One of the methods you can use on a document object is set selected data async, which writes data to the current selection in the document. Async is short for asynchronous. A means not and synchronous means with. This means that the method can execute immediately without waiting for something else to get done first, as it would be if the method was sequential. The syntax in the first statement is office.context.document.setSelectedDataAsync, open paren, data, and then optionally options, uh, comma, and a callback, and this means uh, a callback function. The data is hello world. There are no options specified. The callback is an unnamed function that uses async result from setting the selected data with set selected data async. If all went well, no error message will be displayed. The status of the async result object is tested to see if writing the data failed so the user can get an error message. Whatever data is specified is written to the selected cell. The status of the async result object after this attempt is tested to see if writing the data failed so the user can get an error message. These two code samples do the same thing. async result dot status equal equal quote failed quote async result dot status equal equal office dot async result status dot failed. The other office status is succeeded or office dot async result status dot succeeded. Why might an error happen? By default in Excel all cells are locked, but that doesn't mean anything until a worksheet is protected. So when I protect the sheet and run the program again, no matter what cell I'm on, I get an error. I see the literal text specified, action failed, 
with error. And then the ambiguous message, an internal error has occurred, which is uh, not very helpful. Luckily, I know the cell is protected. It would have been helpful to include more information in the error message, such as cannot write, ensure cell is unlocked, or worksheet is not protected, action failed with error, and then whatever that ambiguous error message would be. Before a worksheet is protected, cells to be written to must be unlocked by clearing the locked box on the Protection tab of the Format Cells dialog box. The next step in the tutorial shows how to read from the spreadsheet and uses Get Selected Data Async instead of Set Selected Data Async. I click on a blank cell, enter something, and click the Run Code button. The first parameter for Get Selected Data Async is coercion type. Choices are HTML, Matrix, OOXML, which is OpenOffice XML, Table, and Text. We want the data back to be a string, so text is used for the coercion type. No options are specified. The callback function returns an error message if the method failed, as before. This time, however, the code writes a message if the method succeeded to literally show selected data colon and then the value property from the async result object. To see more tutorials in this app, click the icon in the lower right. You can choose to see examples to do more basic operations with Excel. Write and Read Arrange uses the matrix coercion type. Write and Read a Table shows headers and rows and uses the table coercion type. Update a Row in a Table shows how to change the data in one row of a table. Get Selected Coordinates, which I think is a really pretty lousy name anyway. It just shows whatever value is in the active cell, so it could have been named better. Anyway, it uses a matrix coercion type. It specifies options and displays the value of the active cell in the message area as long as the app is open and the active cell is changed and it's in the matrix that it's looking at, which means each cell in that matrix is going to trigger the event that writes the message. Persist Settings uses the office.context.document.settings object to set and save async pairs of setting names and values. In the upper right of the app is a menu with choices you can explore. Reload starts the app again. View Source shows the HTML in Notepad or your text editor. It has references to style sheets and JavaScript libraries. What we are not seeing is the JavaScript to display information in the div areas or process the button clicks. So view code doesn't show us code. It shows us markup. The difference between markup and code is that markup is static. Code provides the action. In an Office app, HTML is used to lay out what will be displayed. JavaScript is the programming language. Show as saved image is a toggle to turn whatever is displayed in the app to an image. You might use this if your app shows a map or a chart you want to save or see again. You can insert more than one copy of the app into your document. You can move the app by dragging its border. To remove an app from your document, select it and press the delete key on your keyboard. To ask questions about building Office apps, visit the Developing Apps for Office 2014 forum in the Office Dev Center. Link is in the video description, as all the links that are discussed here. And if I skipped one, let me know and I'll, I'll add it. In summary, I showed you how to download an app from the Microsoft Store, how to insert the app on an Excel spreadsheet, 
how to set Excel options so you have permission to run the app, and we reviewed code to read and write data. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.